Start tracking a blob in the southwest Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche area. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas. In this video, we're going to talk about that and also that big red blob, another one, in the eastern Atlantic. That one is likely to become our next tropical depression, but it will also likely stay away from land. Emphasis on the likely, but there's some shenanigans in the models. I will show you that coming up in just one second. Before we break down both blobs, Hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated on the weather and, of course, as we venture through the rest of hurricane season. And if you do like the weather, hit that thumbs up button if you find this content helpful. Appreciate you guys and all the new subscribers that have found us on this channel. So there is that one blob, the yellow one. We're going to focus on that first because I do think that's going to impact land. The question is, does it become tropical? I don't think it will. But it does have the option and the opportunity to bring some very, very heavy rain to parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and especially Florida. So here is the deal. If you were with us last week, we talked about how we would likely see a sharp increase in Pacific activity because of the Madden Julian oscillation. Well, there we go. There is Lydia. There is Max. Both of those are going to impact this guy here, that blob that has erupted of thunderstorms in the Bay of Campeche, extreme southwest Gulf of Mexico. There's the jet stream. You see the clouds moving in that direction. All three of these are going to get embedded in that flow with some John Madden telestration there. And then kind of work its way into the eastern Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. So I want to show you the model forecast here. Here we go with Lydia. There is Max. There is our blob. All of them kind of converge into the same area. That moisture in the Pacific crosses over. Here's what's left of Lydia. Here's kind of the hodgepodge of what's left of Max and that Southwest Gulf blob. And they're all kind of embedded in that upper level flow. Now, there is a low chance. You saw that little highlight uh, we started the video with from the National Hurricane Center. A 20% shot for this to become tropical. It has an outside chance. But with that jet stream energy right there, I don't know if I think the atmosphere is going to be a little too volatile for this thing to kind of consolidate and get together and become tropical nonetheless i do think this is going to bring decent impacts to parts of the florida panhandle and big bend especially as we move into wednesday and then thursday morning there it goes off the east coast of florida and off the southeast corner of the united states and i think this is actually a precursor of what could happen a good deal this winter for part of the deep south and specifically Florida with that El Nino pattern, that strong subtropical jet stream. So this is what I'm talking about. From Wednesday through Friday, a widespread two to four inches of rain is going to be possible for wherever this thing goes. There's still going to be a little bit of uncertainty to iron out where that front that brought the deep south, the nice cool down over the last couple of days, where that kind of advances further north again. That's going to be the highway where this disturbance, the blob, is going to track over the next few days so there's still some wiggle room is it more central florida is it more like this or is it right where the european model would suggest panhandle and big bend area of florida and then southeast georgia parts of south carolina as well again the widespread two to four inches of rain but on an isolated scale could be more like four to six you see tallahassee at least the model wants four inches and again i don't want you paying attention to that specific number so to speak just yet but again, a nice round, nice swath of heavy rain because of the blob that may not get a name currently highlighted by the Hurricane Center. But again, the environment that it's going to be go going through, it's sheared up pretty good. So we're going to watch that closely still. The Gulf, as we all know, is still super warm. So anything that gets into the Gulf has to be watched closely. So we are on that for you. Water vapor imagery. We're going way far east. Here is Africa. Here is our next cluster of thunderstorms. This is likely going to become our next tropical depression by the middle part of the week. The question is, where does it go? It looked like a sure bet to get up and out, but some models are saying not so fast here. And we do have, okay, one of them is the GFS. I know it's, it kind of loses credibility with that, with the kind of going that way. Some models want to go out here. The, the, they're the ensembles of the GFS, so that's really weird, okay, that the ensembles want to go there. Its operational model wants to kind of dive it back to the southwest, but the only reason why I'd give it any kind of street cred here as to being correct is because the consensus model also 
goes in that direction. That one's heavily used by the Hurricane Center to make their forecast. That's that we, we always talk about that one. So that's a very reliable model. So again, we wait and see. The Bermuda High a little bit stronger right now. So we would expect it to become a little more clear as to where this could go once it develops. So we'll be watching that closely. And I'll show that to you here from the European rendition. This is a kind of a very wide out, zoomed out view here so we can see everything that's going on in the Atlantic. And there's a big storm here. Here is that area of low pressure, that tropical wave that emerged off of Africa, which, by the way, is now getting pretty late in the season for a healthy wave to be off into the Cabo Verde area, the Cabo Verde season. But nonetheless, here we are on October 9th. I want to point out something here as well. I like to show you the Euro model spin, that low-level spin in the atmosphere. What we're looking for is kind of that big ball of red. That's a consolidated big area of low pressure. So there's something that the Euro wants in the North Atlantic as well. Look at what our blob is. It is strung out like a string bean right there through the Gulf of Mexico. That is not something that is healthy in terms of tropical development. You can see the wind pattern here coming out of the east and kinking back and then going back west. That is an open wave. So we don't have a tight, low-level circulation, and it stays that way, at least on the Euro depiction, from as it works its way through Florida. Doesn't mean it's not going to be impactful. I just don't think it's going to be a tropical system as it moves through Florida. Again, I still think, regardless, we're going to get heavy rain, maybe some stronger thunderstorms out of the deal. That's something that we're going to watch closely. Also, we're going to be watching another storm. This is going to be on land, though. So this is October 13th. I want to point this out. It caught my eye while I was looking at the models earlier and really last week. That thing right there is going to be a significant storm, likely the most significant storm that has rolled through the lower 48 so far this season. What this is going to do, it could bring some snow to the... Rockies and then even parts of the lower elevations as well. So this is going to be a big time storm, but it's also going to one up this latest blast of cooler air for the eastern two thirds of the country. I think it's really going to give us uh, the main course of fall. If we had a little taste, the main course of it's coming up by this upcoming weekend, late into the week and early next week for the east. But there it is right there. Big storm. What that means for us is in the west, more warmth jet stream looks like this and we'll go more in depth on a later video but that's gonna be a wild jet stream pattern there's our little depression and it kind of goes up and for what it's worth the euro also there's the Bermuda high the euro also puts it there too so it's kind of in the gfs camp at keeping that likely depression west and south the thing of it is it's hardly anything at this point but there is the Bermuda high so it should go that way. So we're going to watch that one closely as well. But a lot of things going on. The weather becoming more active in the lower 48. And if you want to stay up to date on that weather, whether it's tropical related or as we transition through fall and winter, snow related, you got to keep it right here. We love having you on board. Thank you to all the new subscribers. It's been great meeting everybody in the comments. It's been great tracking these storms alongside you. When they're not impacting anybody. We don't like that. We don't. We like whenever they stay out at sea. And we like whenever it's bringing nice fall weather. If you like that. Or bringing warmth. If you like that. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for finding the channel. And bringing all of the energy with it. And for having the conversations with us as well. If you want to stay updated on all things weather. Please hit that subscribe button. If you happen to find this content helpful. Please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. And we will catch you next time.